Hi all. In this video, let's discuss about uh, common mistakes to avoid as an HTML developer. So let's jump in. So the first one is like, uh, we should not place an uh, block element inside an inline element. This is an incorrect architecture. So because, uh, for example, if you observe, this is wrong one because H1 is a block level element and you're trying to keep this block level element inside an inline element a tag anchor tag is an inline element so this is a wrong one we need to do in this way like a h we can keep the block element h1 on the top and inside that we need to keep the inline element so this is the right way we need to do so let's check what all the block elements and what all the inline elements so if you go to this uh, html block elements and inline elements so here these are the list of block level elements and these are the list of uh, inline elements so here the main difference is the block level element is like a block it will occupy the entire width so here you can observe it you can add uh, occupy an entire width like this so whereas an inline element it will occupy the only width which it was specified so that's the reason we should not keep an inline and a block element inside an inline element so usually we do this mistake we need to avoid that we need to understand uh, an inline element should not, a block element should not be kept in an inline element. So usually a beginners at HTML uh, you know, while they are uh, constructing the markup, they used to do this. So please try to uh, mention or uh, cross check whether this is a block element or an uh, inline element so that you're following the correct architecture or not. So this is, this is the first mistake to be avoided. So the second one will be missing the no script tag. So usually uh, our website, uh, most of our websites would be developed by using the JavaScript. So what if, if the user's browser is disabled with JavaScript? So he can't see anything. If he tries to load our website, he can't see anything because JavaScript is disabled on his browser and our application is dependent on entirely JavaScript. So he can't see anything. It would be like a blank page for him. So in that case, we should write this no tag. So this no tag helps to the uh, users stating that this website uses JavaScript. Please enable the uh, JavaScript from your browser. So this uh, statement, this uh, no tag element would be appeared to the user when the script tag is no not enabled. If it is enabled, this tag won't be appeared to him. If it is not enabled from his end, he can understand he will be getting this message stating that the uh, script tag was disabled from his hand. So it would be like an informative tag so that he can understand what exactly is going on. So coming to the third part. So usually we used to mention SRC and we used to give some image here. But most of the time we used to avoid alt attribute. We used to avoid this alt attribute. But there are two main reasons we need to keep this alt. So for example, whenever you are trying to load any of the image, SRC image, if it is not available at that point of time, then we'll be getting some broken image, which uh, doesn't look good. In that case, it would be more informative to the users if you show some text there or uh, any alternate image or in a text like this, logo of some XYZ company. Instead, uh, if the company logo was broken or it is uh, not available at that point, you can show a text like this or you can uh, show an uh, another alternate image as well. So that's the main usage, first usage of this alt attribute. And the second usage would be SEO, search engine optimization. It helps us in the search engine optimization as well. So uh, when you keep these uh, keywords, uh, HTML SEO also picks these keywords and our page would be uh, coming at the top as well. So these are the two main uses by using this alt alt attribute but most of us will be avoiding this alt attribute stating that it would be will be assuming that this uh, icon will be coming uh, for sure so we need to make sure we need to keep this and use this alt as well so coming to the fourth point so usually we used to miss this block type at the beginning state so what is this block type mentions so this block type is not an attack or uh, an element this is a specification we are uh, telling to the browser to make sure this uh, doc type document content should be verified. So for example, uh, let me go back to the browser. So doc type declaration. 
so there would be uh, different html doc types so like uh, for example if you see the html 4.0 so if you are using this doc type we need to mention the doc type and this type of uh, lengthy thing like this we need to do so in that case html uh, browser can understand we are we are using html 4.0 version so um, this is uh, only specific to the browser browser need to understand what document type definition we are using so that it can render our content perfectly so that's the reason we need to mention this doc type for sure so this is for uh, it's html 1.1 one if you are using this type of document you need to mention entirely like this so then uh, the browser can understand we are using xhtml 1.1 so in that case we are using uh, html5 so if you mention uh, exclam exclamatory mark doc type it would be like uh, we are using html5 document type definition so that browser can understand and it can render the content perfectly so here uh, one more point we can understand the doc type is not a case sensitive you can use all these uh, doc types or valid one so usually every time we used to think and we used to give the capital doc type and uh, not not that not not that case uh, it is a uh, case sensitive not case sensitive so that you can use all these options as well so we should not miss this doc type this this is the one uh, point we need to remember and the common mistake is we used to avoid this doc type we will be not giving this doc type so these are the valid doc types there would be a list of valid doc types where uh, which doc type would be working available uh, html5 what all the doc types available which are not available and for html4 xhtml what are available what are not available so this would be the list you can uh, find so coming to the fifth and last point so we should not miss the end tag so usually if you are using visual studios uh, like a latest version of 1.16 so visual studios has automatically provided this end tag so if as on when i close this tag it will auto automatically generate the end tag so if the end tag is missing in one browser it may work in another browser it it may show errors so few browsers or latest browsers are smart enough to load it and they can understand and they can load but in other browsers if there are bit old browsers they may not understand that but there there would be some ambiguity in the result so that's the reason you need to keep in mind you need to end your tag as on when you create a tag you end it uh, immediately if you are uh, not ending it and if you are uh, involving other elements in that then the html uh, dom would be messed up so if you want to validate your doc type if it is huge number of lines html lines if you want to document or if you want to validate it there would be n number of online tools to be validated or there there would be a number of uh, validation extensions in the visual studios as well so you need to make sure you should keep the end tag for sure as on when you open it you should not miss this end tag so these are the five common uh, mistakes uh, we do in the html5 thanks for watching if you have any questions or any clarifications needed on any of other topics please uh, comment uh, below the video i will try to make uh, those clarifications in my next video thanks for watching